Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Granner. I am the director of the Sleep and Health Research Program at the University of Arizona and the director of the Behavioral Sleep Medicine Clinic there. I'm also a Casper Sleep Advisor and sit on their Sleep Advisory Board. Today I'm going to talk about an issue I care a lot about, sleep and health. So sleep is very important for health. When you think about it, what are the things that our body needs to function at a biological level? We need air, we need food, we need water, and we need sleep. That's a very short list of very important things. And I think we're all on board with the importance of air and the importance of water, but we sort of make excuses for not taking sleep seriously. But at the end of the day, sleep is a fundamental part of our biology and how our body works. And, and this is important for a few reasons. So first of all, sleep plays a role in many different bodily systems, whether it's our cardiovascular health, our metabolic health, our immune health, uh, our brain health, our mental health, our cognitive health, uh, and, and lots of different ways that our body functions. There are many different systems in the body that rely on sleep to function normally. One that's been particularly important these days is the immune system. So sleep is, is intimately tied to the immune system. There's a reason why when we get sick, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to lay down and rest, get some extra sleep. That's because sleep plays critical roles in recovery, repair, healing. Um, it also plays really important roles in our immune system's ability to fight disease, uh, to keep disease away, and to keep illnesses from growing and getting out of control. So when you're not sleeping, you're more likely to be exposed to an unhealthy immune system. And these days, that's something that we're, we're trying really hard to avoid. For example, there's some data that shows that people who don't get enough sleep are more likely to get sick. When they get sick, they get sicker. And um, when they are sick, they take longer to recover. Think about it. Our body is constantly adapting to the environment. We're growing new cells, we're deleting old cells, we're clearing out waste, um, we're trying to make way for new pathways, whether it's in the brain, in the, in the cardiovascular system, all throughout the body. And the immune system plays critical roles at all those different levels. And when you're not able to sleep, your body's not able to do that important work. And then these things start getting out of balance. At first, you might just notice you feel a little more fatigued or you just sort of feel off. But really what that is, it's all these different systems in your body not being able to be in sync with each other and do the work that they need to do. And that's why getting healthy sleep is really important. So I wanted to answer a few questions that people had sent in. So one question people ask is, how much sleep should I be getting uh, each night to be healthy and to boost my immune system? So this is a great question. There's a lot of debate about this, um, but there actually is an answer. For most adults, that is seven to eight hours. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to get seven or eight hours every night. It means that on average, you're getting about seven to eight hours. So does that mean that six hours and 59 minutes is not good enough and somehow seven hours and one minute is magically much better? No. Um, but that seems to be about the range. So now a lot of people are thinking, well, I thought the answer was eight hours. Well, about eight hours, but it turns out eight might have been seven all along. Uh, a lot of times people wake up during the night. The typical adult wakes up more times in the night than they even remember. At the end of the day, most people who get about eight hours are not that different from people who get about seven hours. Now, what about people who get too much sleep? There are people who are getting nine, 10, 11 hours out of 24 hours. Um, that may be too much. On average, people who get very long sleep tend not to be as healthy. That also might play a role in uh, lower immune health. Um, it might play a role in other aspects of health. So if you're getting 10, 11 hours of sleep, you might want to look into why. Um, but the problem for most people is not that they're getting too much sleep, is that they're not getting enough. So how much is not enough? So if you look at the recommendations from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, which is the main sleep doctors organization, or the Sleep Research Society, which is the main a sleep scientific organization or the National Sleep Foundation, which is the main sleep public advocacy organization, or the American Heart Association, or all, all these other organizations, when they look at the scientific evidence, it looks like six hours of sleep on average for most people is probably not enough for optimal functioning. 
Truth is, we don't know much about six and a half to seven, but if you're getting six hours or less, you're at increased risk for things like weight gain, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, um, mood problems, more stress, uh, and problems with the immune system, especially when you get at the extreme short levels of sleep. You can definitely take a toll on your immune system that way. So if you're trying to get the right amount of sleep for health, you should shoot for about seven to eight hours. Now that's not necessarily seven to eight hours on a tracker. A tracker will probably show a little less sleep than you remember. Um, if you remember about seven to eight hours, but the tracker shows like maybe six hours, 15 minutes, or six and a half hours, don't worry. It'll, it'll be about 30 to 60 minutes less than what you remember. Don't worry about that. Uh, just know that if you're re figuring that you're getting about seven to eight hours, you're probably good. All right, um, the next question is, in terms of staying healthy and boosting your immune system, can you talk about how sleep fits with nutrition and exercise and how you would say they're related? Uh, also, if you had to choose between going to the gym in the morning and getting less sleep uh, and sleeping in and not working out, which is better for you or your health? So there's a couple good questions in there. In terms of staying healthy and boosting your immune system, um, so nutrition and exercise are both also really important parts of immune function. So um, we all know that if you're able to eat a nutritious diet, your body's able to do the work it's supposed to do to maintain all your systems optimally. Exercise does the same thing. Getting physical activity during the day, especially getting enough moderate to vigorous activity where your body's actually having to work, um, this is what we were built for. We weren't built to be sitting all day. And when we're able to get some of that activity, our body's able to function the way it was built to. And when we get good nutrition, our body's able to function the way it was built to. And similar, getting the amount of sleep that you need that's of good enough quality, let your body do what it's supposed to do the way it was built for. And the cool thing about sleep, nutrition, and physical activity is they all fit together. So healthy sleep helps give you the energy that you need to be able to be active. And um, in it even affects food cravings and the hormones that regulate how hungry you are or how full you are. So healthy sleep might actually be able to impact a healthy diet and might be able to get you more physically active. And likewise, having healthy nutrition helps support healthy sleep. It helps keep your body working well so that when it's trying to wind down, it's not um, distracted by all of these complex metabolic processes. We are able to wind down a little bit better. Um, and it can also impact weight management. And as people gain weight, their sleep becomes more disrupted um, and they become less able to exercise. And getting good physical activity helps promote healthy circadian rhythms uh, and helps promote sleep at night and better nutrition because of your energy balance. So sleep, diet, and physical activity are really the three legs of the stool of wellness. And if you're focusing on get, having a healthy diet and maybe getting enough physical activity, but you're not dealing with your sleep, you're trying to balance on a two-legged stool and you're going to fall over. You really need all three of sleep, nutrition, and exercise to be in balance. Um, but the good thing is they do support each other. So sometimes being able to make improvements in one will help you make improvements in some of the others. And all of them impact your immune system. All of them impact um, how your body is able to function properly, stave off disease. And even if you do catch any germs or, or allergies or whatever, it helps your body be in the best place it can to fight them off. All right, so the next question is, how important is sleep and recovery from an illness, uh, like a cold or a flu, and how much more sleep should you get when you're recovering? So those are two very good questions. So I mentioned a little bit about the connection between sleep and the immune system. Um, getting healthy sleep is really important for recovery. Your body needs that sleep for the recovery, for the repair, for your immune system to be working properly. So a lot of people talk about getting a little extra sleep if you're sick, and there's some really good reasons for this. Um, I wouldn't vary your sleep wildly. So if you're used to sleeping, say, six and a half, seven hours, I wouldn't be spending 10 hours in bed if you're sick, um, or at least not right away. What I would do is maybe extend by, you know, maybe 30 minutes at a time, or maybe up to an extra hour or something. Um, as long as you're still within that range, you probably don't need 10 or 11 hours of sleep um, most of the time. Um, but if you can spend some extra time in bed, get some extra rest, that'll be good. 
Uh, one of the, the problem with making such a drastic change to your sleep is it can throw off other rhythms too. As remember I mentioned, sleeping too much might sometimes be a problem. Uh, it might also lead to a disruption of your daily rhythms and cycles in other areas of your body as well. So the best thing to do is to make more gradual changes, but if you're sick, get a little extra time in bed. Don't spend all day in bed, but get a little extra time uh, for sleep. All right, another question here, last question. Um, any tips for getting the best sleep for your health or for your immunity? So we've got some ideas here on how to optimize your sleep, especially right now. So one thing people should be thinking about is building some regularity into your schedule. The brain is a pattern recognition machine. If you feed it a pattern, it will learn the pattern. If you feed it, feed it a chaotic pattern where you're staying up and then not going to sleep and then you're up and then you're down and your schedule is varying a lot, your brain doesn't know what to make of that. But if you keep more of a regular rhythm, uh, even if at first it could be a little difficult, you can help your body set a pace and help organize itself around that rhythm. So one thing is building some regularity into the system. If you're gonna try and go to bed around the same time, especially waking up at the same time. The next thing you can do is when you wake up, get some bright light and get some movement. Getting some physical activity in the morning, especially in natural sunlight, can be a great way to set your bodily rhythm for the day. That bright light in the morning sends a pulse through your eye to the brain that sends an important daytime signal to your biological clocks. And having that daytime signal from bright light can help get a lot of different systems in your body working. It can also help your sleep at night. Not only does it help regularize your rhythms, but when you start the day at a certain time and your brain knows, ah, now the day has started, it starts setting a timer. And about 16 to 18 hours later, it's going to be ready for sleep because it's going to expect that, well, if I started my day here, I'm going to be ending my day here. And so if you start the day at a certain time, about 16 to 18 hours later, your body is going to be ready to fall asleep. So if you wake up extra late one day, even if you're sort of tired, it might be harder to fall asleep because your body just might not be ready yet. You still might be um, not quite in... in ready for it to be nighttime. So starting your day at, the, at, at an early enough time to get that bright light, send that morning signal can help prepare you for sleep that night. The third thing is when you get to the evening and you want to set yourself up for good sleep, what you want to do is give yourself plenty of time to wind down and relax. You want to detach. You want to make sure that by the time you get into bed, you're not bringing anything else with you. Now, a lot of people think they want their mind to just turn off like a light switch. I get into bed and I just can't turn my mind off. A lot of times what happens is you trained your own mind to do that. You didn't give yourself enough time to slow down so that by the time you got into bed and had no distractions, this was your mind's first chance to have your attention and actually be able to process all its stuff for the day. If you're going to do it anyway, do it out of bed. This is why you want to turn stuff off maybe 20, 30, 45 minutes before you're planning on going into bed, and at least anything too distracting. And give yourself that time for your mind to process the day, maybe make a list of the stuff you need to worry about tomorrow. It's probably too late to be super productive, but at least you can set yourself up for success. And so when you start worrying about things, you can say, I already thought of that, I already made a note, or I'll make a note, um, and you can get to sleep. It's really important to give yourself enough time to wind down and detach. Because if you get into bed and you're carrying all that baggage with you, your body is going to use that to, um, to take extra time to wind down. And then you're going to feel like you can't slow your mind down. Then it goes into the fourth tip that I have. And that's something called stimulus control. That means if you're in bed and you can't sleep for whatever reason, whether you didn't give yourself enough time to wind down or whatever, if you're in bed and it's been 20, 30 minutes or more, get up. You got to get up. You got to break that cycle of being awake in bed because what you're doing is you're training yourself that the bed is the place where you're awake and tossing and turning. But if you get up out of bed, you'll be able to break that cycle. You want the bed to be paired with sleep and only sleep. Um, you don't want the bed to be paired with wakefulness. So what you need to do is get up out of bed if you've been in there for 20, 30 minutes. Well, what, what should you do? It actually almost doesn't matter. Um, Maybe you only need five minutes to reset and then go back. Maybe you need a half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour. Whatever it, whatever it is you need, take that time, try again. 
Um, just don't turn on bright lights or do anything so mentally activating. You're going to have to wind down from the thing you were using to wind back down. You don't want anything too activating, but take a little bit of time and then try again. If you can't sleep, get up again. But what you want to do is break that bed equals wake cycle, program in a bed equals sleep cycle. And even if you get less sleep tonight or maybe the next night, eventually it's all going to even itself out and you're going to make it so that the bed itself has the power to put you to sleep and it becomes a trigger for sleep. So um, wake up at a good time in the morning with a regular schedule, give yourself enough time to wind down at night. And if you're in bed and you can't sleep, whether it's the beginning of the night or the middle of the night or the end of the night, get up. You're not doing yourself any favors by just lying there. All right, so I really appreciate your questions. Thank you very much. I really hope some of this would be helpful. Uh, if you've got questions about sleep, make sure you leave a comment or tweet at Casper. Uh, and they'll send me any questions. All right. Thanks a lot and sleep well.